My name is Arvind Gupta and I'm a toy maker. I've been making toys for the last 30 years. The early 70s, uh, I was in college. It was a very revolutionary time. There was a political ferment, so to say, students out uh, in the streets of Paris revolting against authority. America was jolted by the anti-Vietnam movement, uh, the civil rights movement. In India, we had the um, uh, Naxalite movement, the Jai Prakash Narayan movement. Whenever there is a political churning of society, it unleashes a lot of energy. The national movement in India was, uh, uh, was testimony to that. Lots of people resigned from well-paid well jobs and jumped into the national movement. Now, in the early 70s, one of the great programs in India was to revitalize primary science in village schools. There was a person, Anil Sadgopal, did a PhD from Caltech and returned back as a molecular biologist in India's cutting research institute, the TIFR. At 31, he was not able to re relate the kind of esoteric research which he was doing with the lives of the ordinary people. So he resigned and went and started a village science program. Many people were inspired by this. The slogan of the early 70s was, go to the people, live with them, love them, start from what they know, build on what they have. And this was the kind of defining slogan. Well, I took one year, I, I joined Telco, make Tata trucks very close to Pune. I worked there for two years and I realized that I was not born to make trucks. Often one doesn't know what one wants to do, but it's good enough to know what you don't want to do. So I took one year off and I went to this village science program and which was a turning point. It was a very small village, a weekly bazaar where people just once in a week, they put in all their wares. So I said, I'm going to spend a year over here. So I just bought one specimen of everything which was sold on the roadside. And one thing which I found was this black rubber. This is called as a cycle valve tube, where you pump in a bicycle, use a bit of this. And there's some of these models. So if you take a bit of the cycle valve tube, you can put two matchsticks inside this, and you make a flexible joint. It's a joint of two. You start by teaching angles, it's an acute angle, a right angle, a puce angle, a straight angle. It's like a universal coupling. If you had three of them and you loop them together, well, you make a triangle. With four, you make a square, you make a pentagon, you make a hexagon, you make all these kinds of polygons. And there's some wonderful properties. If you look at the hexagon, for instance, it's like an amoeba, which is constantly changing its outer profile. You can just pull this out, this becomes a rectangle. Give it a push, this becomes a parallelogram. But this is very shaky. Look at the pentagon, for instance. Pull this out, this becomes a boat-shaped, a trapezium. Push it and it becomes a house-shaped. This becomes an isosceles triangle. Again, very shaky. Give it this, the square might look very square and prim. Give it a little push, this becomes a rhombus. It becomes a kite-shaped. But give a child a triangle, well, she can't do a thing to it. Why use triangles? Because triangles are the only rigid structures. We can't make a bridge with squares because if the train would come, it would start doing a jig. Ordinary people know about this because if you go to a village India, they, they might not have gone to engineering college, but no one makes a roof truss like this because they put tiles on top, it's just going to crash. They always make a triangular roof. Now, this is people's science. And if you were to just poke a hole over here and put a third matchstick, you get a T-joint. And if I were to poke all the three legs of this in the three vertices of this triangle, I would make a tetrahedron. So you make all these 3D shapes. You make a little tetrahedron like this. And once you make these, well, you make a little house, you make, put this on top, you can make a joint of four, you can make a joint of six, you just need a thorn. Now this was, make a joint of six, you make a icosahedron. It's like, a, you can play around with it, this makes like an igloo. Now this is, uh, this is in 1978, I was a 24 year old young engineer. And uh, I thought this is so much better than making trucks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and this is, if you, as a matter of fact, put four marbles inside, you simulate the molecular structure of methane, CH4, four atoms of the hydrogen, the four apex of the tetrahedron, it between the little carbon atom. And well, since then, I just thought that I've been really privileged to go down to over 2,000 schools in my country, village schools, government schools, municipal schools, Ivy League schools, I've been invited by most of them. And every time I go to a school, I see a gleam in the eyes of the children. I see hope, I see happiness in their faces. Children want to make things, children want to do things. Now this is, we make lots and lots of pumps. Now this is a little pump with which you could inflate a balloon. 
It's a real pump. You could actually pop the balloon. And this is, we have a slogan that the best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it. So all you do is to just, it's a very kind of provocative statement. It's a whole bicycle tube, and it's based on a chance discovery. If you take these film cans, they go very snugly into a whole bicycle tube, and this is how you make a valve. You put a little sticky tape. This is one-way traffic. <laughs> well, you make lots and lots of pumps, and this is the, the other one, that you just take a straw, and you just put a stick inside this and you make two half cuts. Now this, what you do is, you bend both these legs into a triangle, and you just wrap some tape around, and this is the pump. And now, if you have this pump, it's like a great, great sprinkler. It's like a centrifuge. If you spin something, it tends to fly out. Well, in terms of, a, if you were in Andhra Pradesh, you would make this with the Palmyra leaf. Many of our folk toys have great science principles. If you spin something, it tends to fly out. If I do it with both hands, you can see this one, Mr. Flying Man. Right? <laughs> this is a toy which is, uh, this is made from paper. It's amazing. There are four pictures. You see insects, you see frogs, snakes, eagles, butterflies, frogs, snakes, eagles. Here's a paper which you could turn. It's designed by a uh, mathematician at Harvard, 1928, Arthur Stone, documented by Martin Gardner in many of his many books. But this is great fun for children. They, you know, they, they all study about the food chain that insects are eaten by the frogs, frogs are eaten by the snakes, snakes are eaten by the eagles. And this can be, if you had a whole photocopy paper, A4 size paper,